full colour resin printing is here. And I'm not talking about 4 to 16 flat colours like in FDM printing, I'm talking about 640,000 distinguishable colour combinations across the surface of detailed models. Whether you're looking to make a single prototype part in a specific tone, or a fully painted detailed miniature, yeah, that's what this does. I just heard myself speak there and I'm reading my own script and I realise this sounds like a sales pitch. But look, the point is, I get it, this is not for everyone. And I know for a fact that many people out there, like me, enjoy painting models that they 3D print. But even if that's the case, you've still got to admit, from a technology standpoint alone, this is flipping cool. And obviously, I don't mean flipping, but I'll get demonetized for swearing in the first 30 seconds. So instead of a review of this machine, I just want to show off how this amazing technology works because you can already order prints from one of these machines at very reasonable prices, but we'll get to that. And also, just a reminder, if you watch this video before UK Games Expo 2024, I'll be providing details in this video of how you can get a free 3D model of me from me to add to your collection. So if you don't care and you don't know who I am, hi, I'm Ross, and this is Farhammer Videos. Right, so as you may know, I recently visited my mini factory. I've done a video on this and that video talked about this video being next. But with all the new printers that have come out in the last month and my general lack of time management skills, this video may actually be out first. Who knows? Feel free to laugh at my ineptitude in the comments. So. Right, as you may not know, I recently visited My Mini Factory. Their partner site, Only Games, sells made-to-order physical models for those of you who want the ability to get these 3D printed models but don't want to go through the hassle of 3D printing them yourself. And I know those people out there exist because, well, they comment on my videos all the time. I get so many comments saying, I love the idea of 3D printing, I just don't want to own a 3D printer. Yeah, fair enough. I understand that. But you've got to admit, a lot of us see the benefit of 3D printed resin models. 3D printing has already given us models with more detail and often less cleanup than their plastic counterparts. Even I'd love to just have a model arrive at my door immediately, ready to be painted. That's actually the largest part of my hobby. But I suspect there are also numerous people out there who would like a model or even an army to arrive at their door ready painted and ready to play with. Or just have a big one-off model like I got as a standee for my desk. But regardless of anyone's reason for wanting or not wanting one of these prints, as I said, are we 30 seconds in now? Yeah? Awesome. This technology is just so f***ing cool. And the thing I really want to convey for those of you who are less interested in the miniatures side of this hobby, this printer has some incredible features which showcase the potential future of home resin printing. Because this process is literally drop the coloured model into the slicer application, remotely send it to the printer and click print. When it's done, you can remove the model with your bare hands and just rinse it in water to remove all of the support material. How cool is that? Also, how does this actually work? Well, in this case, Only Games have been working with Stratasys for months now to refine the colour output of this machine. And this machine is one of several different J5 models from Stratasys. It's an industrial grade system developed for use in dental, medical and prototyping industries. Only Games are using it to deliver fully painted models. And this is the sort of machine where you won't find the prices of it online. It's call for a quote. And the resin material that's put through it can actually cost more per litre than some 3D printers I've reviewed. Now, admittedly, that's the really cheap, crappy ones. And this isn't something that you'd buy and put on a desktop anyway. Standing at over 1.5 meters tall with an area of 651 by 661 millimeters, this unit is the size of a small fridge. And yes, you need it because the lower half is where you install up to 12 resin cartridges. There are a ton of materials available for this machine with various properties for different applications, but only games are using black, white, cyan, magenta and yellow along with a bay for support material. The second load of bays below this is used for redundancy, so when one cart runs out it moves on to the next one so you can swap them out without having to pause or delay prints. Now I hope the build quality of this machine goes without saying. If you need proof of its robustness, then check out the frame for the Z-axis. We talk all the time about printers with single or dual linear rails. This thing has what I can only describe as pistons. Now, you may be wondering about the odd shape of this machine and why it looks like some crazy vinyl record player, because I was also confused. 
Now, it took a few explanations for me to understand how this works, and it was only when I saw it in person that I could actually grasp what it does. This prints like no other resin printer I've seen before. You can forget your SLA, mass SLA, and DLP technologies. This process, as has been trademarked by Stratasys, is referred to as polyjet printing. Now, from the specs I was able to gather online for this machine, the build area is stated as 140 by 200 by 187 millimeters, but seemingly that's just the maximum size of a single printed component. You can actually duplicate that build area several times around the spinning build plate. Don't worry if this still makes no sense, because I'll show how it works using the footage I captured and some of the 3D renders of the process I borrowed from Stratasys' online promotional videos. So let's run through it. As you may imagine, the slicer application is proprietary. You simply throw the colored model into the application and tell it to orient the model for you. There's no need to add any supports to the model, but I'll explain the support material shortly. Now, even on a small laptop, this process was incredibly fast. And once that's done, you just send the print to the printer wirelessly. Now in this process, there are a load of options to choose depending on the materials the machine is using. But because this one is used in a production environment, doing pretty much the same task of printing colored models over and over, we can skip all this. But you can actually select the surface finish too, which is either satin or gloss, and that's kind of cool. Now once the model's on the printer, you just tell it to start the print, and from here, this spinning plate will move upwards to what I will just call the printing components. You see, there's multiple here, and as the bed spins, each of these components performs its particular task, though it's not a case of all of these operating with every rotation, it's done in various stages. So first, on the left, we've got the print heads, and in a similar way to how inkjet printers work, these will lay dots of UV curing material on the surface of the spinning print bed. Now, whilst this is essentially UV curing resin, it's referred to as ink. And, just like an inkjet printer, these coloured inks are mixed with black and white to give us the 640,000 different colour tones that this machine is capable of producing. But this is only the outer surfaces of each layer, approximately 200 microns in depth, into the actual model. The internal material is made up of either pure black or pure white. If you actually snap one of these models when it's printed, you can see the core material is actually a single colour. And the print heads will also lay down the support material, which is used as both a base and completely supports and surrounds the model from underneath and the sides. There's no support gantries with contact points on the model. This is a complete and gapless support bed for every part of every surface on every layer. And this can easily be removed after printing. So, as the plate spins past these print heads, they lay down the dots and then retract into the body of the printer, and that's against an internal wiper to clean them for the next layer. And then, they pass a roller, which is similar to the ones used in laser printing. The ink is negatively charged, the roller is positively charged, it might be the other way around, but you get what I mean. And this is used to pick up any stray microns of excess material droplets before it gets cured. And this is always running throughout the print. The final stage is the LED curing bar, which, like the print heads, move between the inner and outer planes of this disc, and they light up to cure and harden the dots in place. Again, it does not appear that all of these sequences occur in a single rotation, but I'm not 100% clear on the process if it does a particular set of colours in one pass, then an internal material, then support material, then a couple of cure passes, but what I do know is this prints damn fast. Now, whilst this printer is capable of layers as low as 18 microns, the model I had printed was at the pretty accepted standard of 50 microns, and that was complete in just over 7 hours, making the speed of this printer pretty comparable to most home printers. Now, suffice to say, I'm incredibly impressed by what this style of technology can achieve in terms of speed. Yes, monocolor resin prints are getting faster now, but for the amount this does, the time it does it in is genuinely astounding. But I think the most impressive part is the thing we don't currently have in most printers, and is also the thing that puts a lot of resin printing adopters off, is that once this is all done on this machine, the model is free to handle with bare skin. And it's at this point encased entirely within the wax-like support material. 
Now, before showing the cleaning, I just want to quickly talk about the maintenance process, which only games run through after every single print. Now, this isn't automated, nor does it self-detect when it's clean, but the printer shows you a checklist of things to clean in a particular order. And to do this, you need a very special type of cloth to prevent any stray fibers from getting into the machine's mechanics. A couple of dabs with isopropanol, and then it's a case of wiping down the print heads, the roller, the print head wiper, the UV lamp, and finally, the build tray. Once this is all complete, you're ready for your next print. But for us, this is where we took the model or models to go off and have the support material removed. Now this model, as I said in my other My Mini Factory video, which may be out before or after this, I don't know, I asked for this model in order to feed my own ego. So I had a model sculpted by my friends at Titanforge around my head scan I had done, one that I've actually printed in previous videos, so you've seen it. Now they added some signature elements like my hoodie, a bottle of Wargamer resin, and an Artis Opus dry brush, and whilst I'm stood on a pile of boxes, I like to imagine these as futuristic 3D printers. Now the colours on this render were based on my previous profile picture that I had commissioned several years ago, and this model was digitally painted by Printed Obsession. They have done a number of digital paint jobs on various models, which you can actually already order directly from Only Games. So if you're enjoying this content, don't forget to check out both Titanforge and Printed Obsession along with Only Games, and as usual, links are down in the description. So, as I've teased a couple of times already, and I hope I haven't kept you waiting too long like most people whinge about in comments, uh, don't mind those comments, it feeds the YouTube algorithm. Keep complaining about me, I love it. Anyway, on to cleaning. The cleaning process on these models is incredibly straightforward to the point where many of you will look at it and think, God, I wish I had that at home, that's amazing. So, no joke, it's a simple case of popping it into an ultrasonic cleaner with water, no isopropanol or crazy chemicals, just normal water, and when this is heated and the ultrasonic cleaner is turned on, all of the wax-like support material is cleared away, leaving nothing but the complete and coloured model beneath it. And because the model had every single surface supported, there's no support marks anywhere. Just a pure and pristine model surface that is printed as though it was perfectly suspended and cured in mid-air. Please tell me you're not impressed by that alone. Forget the colour. Tell me you're not impressed by the technology and how this is just printed perfectly, no support marks, cleaned in nothing more than water and an ultrasonic cleaner, and you've got a perfect model. Tell me that's not amazing. Go on, please. The comments are down there. Can you do it? Really? Is anybody out there saying, oh, no, this is horrible? Seriously. Anyway, this is all promo really, isn't it? I haven't been paid to make this video, but I got a free model out of it that's cool. Now, if you're interested and you think it's cool and you want to see this finished coloured model in person, it, along with numerous other coloured models, will be on display at UK Games Expo 2024, which is when colour printing on Only Games will be officially launched. I'll be wandering around at the event too, so please come up and say hi, tell me your printing and painting stories, and I'll have dozens of miniature versions versions of this sculpt to give away too. All it costs is a polite hello and asking for one. However, if you are going, I will be there with my family on the Friday as it's my kids' first con. So forgive me if I need to be a little more brief on that day. I'll be more free on the Saturday and the Sunday. Speaking of, the best time for a meet will be the Sunday when I'll actually be at the My Mini Factory booth doing some painting demos. But if you can't make it there, or maybe it's in a different country and you're not going, I'll be taking these models to future cons too, like Gen Con, Nova, Spiel, where I'll most likely be at the Artist Opus booth doing painting demos. But before I go, I want to know, seriously, honestly, what do you think about this technology. Now, I worry that existing miniature artists could interpret this as a threat to their work, but I honestly find that quite unlikely, as in, it's not gonna be a threat. In fact, the opposite. Like, look at the 2D art world now, where companies are selling their poster prints of famous artists' work. The original work's values have skyrocketed. This technology suggests a future where more people could actually own a full 3D copy of models as artwork, but even scans of models painted by their favourite artists like Angel Giraldez, Darren Latham, Richard Gray, David Soper and more. I'm not saying they would want to get involved in this, I'm just saying imagine owning just a piece of their greatness or a copy of their greatness in your own home 
if that's your cup of tea. I'd love it. I think it'd be fantastic. But the thing is, like, my mini factory has already become a place where people in this hobby can not only showcase and celebrate, but even earn from their creations. You've got digital sculptors and rule makers selling their things. You've got the people who paint them getting paid tips just for pictures they've uploaded to the platform. Now imagine a future where you can actually paint a model, have it 3D scanned, and sell that digital paint job. To me, this brings the world of creative people closer together. And when it's done right, as I trust my mini factory to do, because they're all about community, it allows different creators work to be enjoyed by a much wider audience of people. Love this or hate it, like any new technology, like AI, there's no putting this genie back in the bottle. It's out there now, it's available, and this is just the beginning. I expect one day, very soon, you'll be able to order an entire War Games force of figures in the exact colour scheme and style that you want. But, like I was saying, what do you think? I think you can tell I'm a bit overexcited about it, but if there's been any pattern in my videos since I've started this channel, it's that I'm happy when technology leaps forward and I'm unhappy when technology could have been done better. And this is one giant leap in my eyes. If nothing more, I'm at least looking at this as a prophecy to the day where home 3D printing at least gives us some of these features and benefits. I don't mean colour so much as the closed resin feed, the ability to fully support models without having support marks and clean up, at least not clean up that's little more than dissolving the support solution in a bath of hot water. It's coming guys, in fact it's already here. Check out Only Games for their ever-growing selection of models and as always, I've got links in the description. And if you wanna buy one of these printers, I'd love to say, click my affiliate link so I can earn a commission. I'd love to earn a commission on one of these. They cost that much. It would feed my family for a couple of months. Now, at least at the time of recording, I have no affiliate link, but I'll put a link to the printers below this video. And if you're watching this, please let me have an affiliate link, Stratasys. I think that would be, you know, great. I'd love it. Thank you. I'd be able to do more videos faster. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching and thanks to our members who support us financially each month and they get early access to videos like this and their name in the credits. So until next time, we all go a little mad sometimes. See you guys. Fohammer out.